If you enjoy the content, I would appreciate you hitting the subscribe button and checking out my socials. Hey, I'm Smirk here, and today I want to show around 5 pro openings you can do on every map in CS2. You may want to use these openings if you have a good spawn for the pick, or you want to change your approach and the defense because you're too predictable and they might not expect it. Real Counter-Strike Knives with beautiful finishes for cheap prices along with 10% off if you use code SMIRKY within 10 days of this video. Thanks to today's sponsor, Knifey.gg. Knifey is the leading brand for CS replica knives, working with big names like Zyru and KS. They offer delivery to over 30 countries with a wide range of knives, finishes and customization all on their site. Check it out in the description. And now for something completely different. Starting off with the newest addition to the CS2 competitive pool is Dust 2. A very common opening that everyone's seen is just an open peak in Suicide. However, I've seen pros add layers to this peak. In this round, Cadian is wanting to go for the opening, but before he peaks, he will first throw this flashbang, landing in the middle of mid, hopefully giving Cadian the greater advantage as he peeks into suicide straight after. With Zyru in round 6, we can see he'll do the same thing where he'll throw the flashbang, but unfortunately due to the tea smoke indoors, he won't be able to peek with it. Another approach you can take to peek in suicide is getting close to the door. In this round, Zyru will crouch peek and look into suicide. Within this angle, he's ready for any player to jump spot this area. Meanwhile, he's safe from any T-side orpers peeking from suicide. In this round though, as soon as he moves his crosshair away, an enemy peeks and misses the shot. With Zyru again, he will try something similar. He will jump behind the CT smoke, catching a quick glimpse of anyone peeking suicide. While this is happening, his teammate Spinks will run lower and Zyru will peek suicide using the same peek, waiting for any players to jump into his crosshair, but again unfortunately misses. This video isn't based around rifles, but I will showcase what Spinks does in this round. Spinks is just going to quickly go lower, where he will wait for any T players to come to him. This is a little bit risky as Spinks is isolated, so Zyru will flashbang mid allowing Spinks to peek out, get a kill, and fall away before being isolated. A very powerful opening you can use is boosting onto short, looking into lower. In this round, Horzik will crouch jump onto JT's head, making his way onto short. JT will be the one boosting, and to do this, he'll get to the bottom left corner of the top right box, Crouch and let the players jump on top of his head. And Elige will be joining Holzerk, so he will also jump on top of JT's head and stand at this corner looking at Cat. This allows Holzerk to jump on top of Elige's head where he can look down into lower. And while he's looking at lower, Elige can watch for any players running up Cat. Now I say this peak is really powerful because in the large majority of T rounds, the T's will come lower as part of their default pretty early into the round and the earliest time they can make it to lower is at 1.43. If you want to check out any other timings that can help you and your alt picks, a little cheeky blog but check out the spawn timing video I made. Unfortunately in this round though, Holzuk won't get anything as Liquid will be executing onto B. Something you can do to mess with the T side is pushing lower. Because of the vision in mid is so obscured by this wall, it makes it difficult for the T side to spot if players are running into lower. This can allow you to run a setup like G2, where in this round, Monacy and Hunter will rush into lower. As he peeks out, he'll be ready for any T players to jump spot from this box, punishing them for getting information. Once Hunter has made it into lower, Monacy will join him and hold this angle. And this angle is pretty strong as you can kill players making their way towards lower. So in the perfect scenario, Monacy could get a kill 
move back so he doesn't get traded. And when that T does try to trade, Hunter, who is in this corner, can punish. But in this round, the T's are going to throw a flashbang, which does make it a little bit messy, as both players need to look away from the angle, causing Hunter to die, but Monacy is able to get one before being put away. Moving to Inferno. On Inferno, there isn't that many crazy peaks and openings you can go for, but due to the map being so linear with tight spaces the T's have to go through, it can make the T-size pathing predictable for you to op. Our first pick will be for apps. In this round, Jane will come into apps and hold this angle for holes. This is a pretty standard angle, but typically it's the pit player who's in this position. So your enemies might not be expecting an op to be holding the angle. A really strong two-man setup you can do inside of apps is this one from G2, where Monacy and Nexa will be pushing holes. Monacy will score pin, placing his sights on the stairs, ready for any apps players on their default to peek him. Meanwhile, you have Nexa outside of this radiator, waiting for any players to peek out bedroom. And in this round, it works perfectly. My recommendation is that you run this setup at least one to two times a game due to how strong the setup can be, and if done correctly, can seem so random for the T side. Another opening I've seen players go for is peak and ramp from short. Now, you could do the traditional way of like Torji's doing in this round, where you go through site too short and peak ramp. But the problem with doing this is that you don't know if an orb is already holding you. In this round, I assume Torji does it because he thinks the T's can't buy an orb, but alternatively, you can do the other method that I've seen Sirison do, where you jump across mid, spotting for information on ramp. Once Sirison has done this jump spot, he knows there's no orpers holding him, allowing him to peek back out, ready to punish any T's for peeking him. But you do need to be aware that holding this angle for too long could result in your demise. Roughly at 141 is the time it takes for the T's to run up second mid and peek you. Another layer you can add to this peak is having your short play push mid. In this round, Sirison will jump spot ramp, spotting nobody. Meanwhile, his teammate in JDC will push down mid, waiting for players to run into second mid. In this round, it goes pretty well, as JDC gets the kill under Jam, but unfortunately will be traded by his two other teammates. In the scenario a player on ramp, or Banana knew that JDC push and tried to punish, Sirison will be able to punish the punish, in this round though, he does get the chance, but does miss the shot. And for reference, this is JDC's POV. If you want to play a little bit safe, you could go for the peak where you catch players swinging out mid. This peak is a little bit more low risk, low reward, as it can be unlikely in higher tier gameplay that he just swings out mid but it is possible. But again, if you are doing this peak, you do need to be careful, as players running up second mid can kill you while you're doing this peak around 141. Moving over to Banana, there wasn't that many crazy ideas I've seen pros go for, but the most common one I've seen is players just holding half wall, ready for any aggressive T players to make their way fast into car. But in quite a few rounds, your visibility will get obscured by smokes and enemy molotovs. But again, it's a great peak if you want to punish fast aggressive players. Alternatively, you could do something like Torji. In this round, Torji will make his way into car, bounce a smoke off this glass, and go for the peak. Meanwhile, he has a player in CT, throwing supportive flashbangs, making it easier for him to swing. But unfortunately in this round though, Stewie gets the better of him by pre-firing. For context though, this is what the peak would have looked like if Torji survived. Moving over to Ancient. 
a very common peak I've seen from the CT side is Orpus going long to look at ramp. From this angle, you can catch any players trying to boost on top of this box, and you can also catch players running out of ramp. In this round, it will work really well, as Monacy uses the wall on his right to cover potential T-side flashbangs, allowing him to hold the angle where he gets the kill into Shui, and later peeks out to kill Exertion while his teammates defend the site. A really interesting peek I saw from Sirison is one where at the start of the round, he will come into cave, right click throw the smoke at the entrance, and peek into heaven. Unfortunately in this round, there is a T-small cup so his vision is denied. When I tested the smoke in a private server, I noticed if a T threw a Molotov inside of cave, it will still spread to this position. I'm assuming the smoke is supposed to be used to allow you to slip away after shooting a shot. Something pretty generic you can do is go Donut. By going Donut at the start of the round with the AWP, it can put you in a position where you can deny aggressive T-side players. In this round, Toji makes his way into Donut where he scopes into mid, catching Monase trying to go for a cheeky pick. If you really want to change things up and get aggressive, you could try this. Because typically the T's don't have to worry about aggression when they're in this area, this play I'm about to show you is perfect. In this round, Electronic and Jim will run out of house, Electronic will molly, and Jim will flash, making it difficult to run through the molly. I do believe Jim and Electronic tried to run boost, but Jim does miss. Either way, he's still confident enough to scoping behind his Molotov and peek into the angle. This type of play is really not common, as typically the Opus will play further back, not really peek it into elbow, rather waiting for players to peek out of it. So by doing this, you can catch players who are not paying attention, or potentially getting ready to peek other angles. Moving over to main, everyone's probably seen the standard pick that everyone does with the AWP, where if you go main, you can just hold for the right side. But a nice little setup G2 used in round 17 was one where they took a lot of A control. In this, Monacy will come in and hold the left side. And with Nexa trusting Monacy to hold the left, Nexa will push in and clear the right, later gaining full main control. Since Nexa has got full main control, Monacy can reposition to another area to help control the map. Moving over to Nuke. Outside on Nuke is a very popular position for Opus to peek, especially around these boxes. In this round, Monacy goes to credit and places his crosshair above these boxes intending to catch any T-side players jump spotting for information, just like you can do is doing here. But do be aware, if you are holding this angle, a player could cross below you just like Kenda. It's up to you on which angle you hold. Alternatively, another angle Orpers love to peek is the Red Cross outside. Combining this with a Molotov and you peeking Garage with the AWP allows you to have lots of outside control making it difficult for aggressive T-side players to run to red quickly. However, it is common to be smoked off from this position, like in this round where Big will do standard outside smokes. But Nikodos will use that to his advantage. Because now he can't get peaked on red, it allows him to peek out, and Nikodos will try to catch players jump spotting above this box, similar to Monacy in the other clip, but later places his crosshair on this cross. A very easy low risk play you could do is peeking door from main. By doing this, you can catch aggressive T-side players trying to jump into vent or go into A. This can be useful against T-side players who like to go down vents or perhaps go into A fast. And you also have the possibility of catching a T-side player just minding their own business, defaulting inside of lobby. In this clip, we can see Monacy will look pretty deep into lobby, but compared to Cadian, Cadian will just hold for players running out of door, playing it a little bit safer. At the start of the round with the AWP, roughly 30-40% to 40 of the rounds should be you starting ramp, 
So here's a nice little trick you can do. Searson in this round wants to start a ramp. He will come over and throw the smoke. But this smoke will be bait. As for the T's, they may see the smoke landing and become complacent. However, for Searson, he will pee just before it blooms, hoping to catch a T by surprise. But in this round, doesn't catch anything. If you really want to change the pace and really disrupt the T side plans and defaults, you could try this double push from Nath and Kadian. Nath will throw his default Molotov and jump on top of this box. Similar to Cirrus and Smoke, this Molotov will be used as bait, intended to make the T size think it's just a round player defaulting as normal, where actually Kadian will peek behind the Molotov, and Nath will jump on top of this box playing above Cadian just in case he needs help. As Cadian peeks in, he collects all of Trophy before Naf and him start pushing further. Cadian will peek into radio and hold this very important angle. This angle denies the T's from coming in and out of radio, giving Naf cover as he pushes up. The clear intention of this is to try and get a kill and if they do, they can easy fall to ramp to play the 5v4. But because they don't get any kills, Naf can move into Trophy and hold for control. Flying over to Anubis. A really aggressive opening I've seen quite a few opens go for is peaking canals from main. In this round, Zairi will go over towards A with a teammate. He'll come over to main and jump and left click throw this flashbang. This flashbang will land high, affecting any players outside of this doorway. At this point, it is recommended that you do pre-aim this area, as the meeting point for CT and T's is roughly at this doorway. But in this round, I believe Zaryu heard DGT towards water, causing him to focus on this position. He does miss the shot, but later he positions on top of this table, making it difficult for the T's to pre-aim his head since it's higher than it usually is, where eventually he gets the kill. And the A-side player in flames will join Zairu in trying to get this kill, acting as a bodyguard just in case Zairu misses the shot and gets overwhelmed. In this round, we can see Zairu will go for the same pick, except this time he'll jump on top of the red table looking for players crossing this line. However, in this round, Flames decides to peek out where he dies to DGT. And this is Flames POV. Alternatively, you could do a similar pick but reversed, where in this round, Shiro will act as the bodyguard playing anti-flash. Meanwhile, Zontix will peek the doorway, spraying the T's down. Zortex will get a double, falls away, Mumo Shiro playing at pillar can deny the trade. Taking a look at mid, you've probably seen the generic angles that everyone plays in house where you either peek from this angle or this one at door, but an interesting one I saw from Martinez is one where he goes house and tucks in this right corner. This angle is actually pretty brilliant. As for a T, you're either going to be peeking in one of these areas. One is in an angle where you can't see Martinez, and the other one is where you can see him, but you're looking directly into an orb. If you do want to get really aggressive in mid though, you can try this one, where at the start of the round, Martinez will smoke off bridge, denying the T-side vision, giving an opportunity for Martinez to peek into canal. But in this round, he doesn't find anything. Moving over to Mirage, Mirage is a fantastic map to allow Opus to get lots of different openings. Starting in Palace, at the start of the round, some Opus like to jump onto the default box into Palace and hold, and hold the angle. This is intended to catch any defaulting A players on the T side by surprise when they try to lurk. In this round though, Brokey doesn't get anything. With Virtus Pro, they're going to do this with two players. Jamie's going to peek in and hold the angle. After holding for a little bit, 
his teammate in electronic will push behind him and clear the left side. In this run though, they don't get any kills, but are able to get lots of information by taking palace control. If you do have good movement, you can jump from window to short. In this round, Nikodos is going to go through window and he's going to run along this wall, allowing him to strafe jump and jump onto this wall. By doing this jump, it allows you to get to shore a lot quicker than you running through B. Once Nikodos lands, he holds this angle, ready for players to run to bucket, run down mid, or run up cat. Later, he does have the opportunity to get a kill, but does miss. As mentioned before, you could run through B, but again, you won't get the same opportunity as we saw from Nikodos. In this round, Brogy will make his way into short and hold for any players going up cat or going to chair. A really smart play I saw from Brokey was one where he faked he was in window and got a pick under. In this, he will make his way into window with his connector player in ROPS. He will fire a shot in top mid and due to the tease of throwing the smoke in window and top mid, they don't have clear information on where Brokey is. And adding the fact that Brokey fired a shot, they may think he's in window, where actually he's jumping under with his teammate. Brokey will hold this angle waiting for players to come downstairs. Meanwhile, Rops will be behind him, playing anti-flash next to this wall. In the scenarios the T flashed under, Rops can turn around while his teammate Brokey is blind and go for fights. But Brokey will get the dream scenario where Electronic will dry peek him, allowing him to get an easy kill. Now at this point, Rops and Brokey could try to fall away into connector, but could be exposed to mid without any smokes or proper util. So, as a response, and then killing one of the B players, him and Brokey will take the risk in pushing into B, and in this round are rewarded with lots of information and control. If you want to peek apps, you could do the default way where you jump on top of van and look into apps, but I saw one where Brokey will use the physics of the van in B to his advantage. Brokey will come over to van and place himself on the bumper of this car, allowing him to have a headshot angle into apps making it difficult for the T's to hit him. Meanwhile, the T's torsos are completely exposed to Brokey and his AWP. Moving to the last map in Vertigo. Vertigo doesn't really have that much creative AWP picks you can go for, even before and after the Vertigo changes. But a really common pick I've seen from a lot of AWPs is them peaking yellow. Due to the pathing being much shorter for the T's to go to yellow, it allows CT players to get to yellow much quicker than the T's, giving them opportunities to pick players off when they're at the bottom of ramp, where before, they was much, much closer. And from what I've seen, this pick has been pretty successful. So in the near future, you might see more teams smoking off this angle to prevent this scenario. On mid, you can go for the default mid hold, where you place yourself near this box, waiting for players to come into your crosshair. This is pretty standard, predictable, and very easy to flash due to the little windows in mid. But if you are positioned in a way where you're not too close to the box, acting as a bit of an off angle, you could get an easy kill onto a lurker. But if you really want to spice things up, you could push further into mid. In this round, we can see holes that go push in, holding an angle onto the door in ladder room, and players coming into mid, and might catch some T's off guard, as they might not be ready for an AWP to be so far pushed up into mid, and I feel like it can be pretty hard to flash this angle. With Ents, we're going to see a round where Potty will push up with the AWP, doing the same thing as Holzerk, except this time he'll have a teammate and Goofy with him. Potty will hold the same angle as Holzuk for a little bit, but will later push up to hold for players that come in from T-spawn. Meanwhile, Goofy will hold for players in ladder. Deep mid setups aren't really used that much, so by doing something like this against a solo T defaulting, is most likely going to get you a kill. And if needed, both players can easily flank the opponents if they are executing onto A or B. And the last opening I want to show you is you just peeking stairs. This is a pretty standard angle and can allow you to pick off players trying to quickly take stairs control. 
This angle is very predictable and standard, and in a lot of scenarios, you will be flashed off the angle. Hope this video gave you a lot of inspiration on what different alt picks you can go for if you need them. Apart from that, thanks for watching. Cheers, Nivy.gg for the sponsor, and see ya in a bit.